Hello, hello, and welcome to another in the studio. In this video, we're going to look at some drum bus processing. After watching this video, you should be able to achieve a louder, more punchy, more full drum sound. So let's get right into it. I'm going to walk you through a drum bus processing example, exactly how I would do it for real. So let's dive right in. Here's what we have to work with. Okay, just a simple little, little drum loop there. Okay, so the first thing in the chain, I would go for a compressor. So I'm gonna use the 1176 for this. I like this compressor on drums. Um, it has a nice, you know, punchy sound and it adds a little bit of harmonic distortion, which is nice on drums. It helps tie everything together. Now, in general, um, a slow attack, fast release is gonna give you more punch. A fast attack and medium to slow release will give you more control. So it really, those settings really depend on your drums and what you need out of your compressor. Do you need more control? Do you want more punch? You need to make that decision. In this particular example, I want kind of a more punchy sound. So I'm gonna go for a fast release and a slow, a slower attack, slower to medium attack. I'm gonna keep the ratio on four and I'm just gonna turn the output down a little bit so we don't, it's not too loud. And I'm gonna exaggerate the compression at first while I'm dialing in the settings. That helps me hear what the compressor is actually doing. Um, and then I can dial that back to a more appropriate level. So here we go. So you see if I, if I go for that fast attack, we're, we're just losing all the transient there, all the transients. So I want a slower attack here. Maybe something, somewhere around there. And then let's just dial this back. I'm usually looking for somewhere between, you know, one and a half, two on the lower end to maybe four to five dB of compression on the upper end, depending on my drums and what I need to do. But I think around two dB is fine here. So let's match the level now. That'll do. It's important to match the level so you're really hearing what the process, in this case the compressor, is actually doing to the sound. If you AB it and one is just drastically louder than the other um, with the process on or vice versa, then it's going to be so hard, almost nearly impossible, pretty much impossible to really hear properly what, you know, what it's doing to the sound where you can actually tell if you like what it's doing or not because you're always going to prefer the louder sound that's just the way our hearing works so it's just that's why it's so important to match the level so you can actually make a proper you know 
informed decision on whether the compressor is helping the sound or it's or you should leave it off. Okay, so the next thing in the chain is going to be, I'd usually maybe go for some uh, distortion or some saturation or maybe like a little bit of overdrive or something. Um, in this case, I'm gonna use the, the oxide tape, little tape saturation here, with this tape emulation plugin. Okay, and I love tape because you get a little harmonic you know, distortion there, which is going to help tie the drums together. And also you get a compression effect as well, where the tape, tape, you know, it's just rolling off and softening the transients a little bit and helping control the peaks in the, in the dynamics a little bit more. So on the tape, um, the inches per second here, the lower the value there, the more drastic the tape effect will be. So I'm going to leave it on 15 and I'm just going to pull down the output and I'll just push the input in a little bit so we get a little bit of action. Okay. little subtle bit of tape saturation there sounds nice all right moving on so after compressing and tape saturation in this example what can happen is you can lose some of the upper mids and mids in particular it could sound a little bit more kind of this could suck the life out of the the upper mids and, and highs a little bit it can make it sound a little bit dull so after compression and like tape saturation like this, I might try just some EQ to bring a little life back to um, the drums. So I'm going to do that with the Holtec. And okay, so let's start with the, the mids here. I'm going to push this peak dial up quite high, exaggerated a lot, and then I'm just going to flick through these EQ, these preset EQ bands to see if we can find a nice area to, to boost. And then of course we'll dial this back. So here we go. Yeah, I like it there at 2K. And then the next thing I'll do is actually maybe try to maybe dip out some of the lower mids. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but this time we're, we're, we're cutting. So again, I'm gonna exaggerate this. I'm gonna flick through these low mid, mid range frequencies. liking that. This is bringing a little bit of life back to the mids there. Um, and then what I'll do is let's try a boost in the higher frequencies. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Let me push this bandwidth up a little bit. And I'm just going to exaggerate this boost and we'll flick through these high frequency bands.
like it there at 8K, but I'm just gonna just give this a little tickle. I'm liking that, that's bringing a little life back to the drums there. Okay, so the next thing I might try is Transient Designer. And what I'll do here is just try to maybe tighten the drums up a little bit. So I'm just going to, I'm not gonna play with the attack in this case. Sometimes I might, I might feel like I need to increase the attack a little, a little bit in this case I don't really feel like that's necessary but I think maybe dipping out a little bit of sustain and, and just kind of taking away the tail a little bit and just tightening the drums up ever so slightly so let's try that that just just dipping out the sustain by a db and a half there just this tightens it up ever so slightly i mean we're not doing major moves here this these techniques these processes here these are just to you know tie everything together control the dynamics you know enhance the sound a little bit if your drums don't sound good at this point then it's not going to fix them. You need to, they need to sound, be sounding good already. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is some parallel compression. So I'm going to do this on this auxiliary track here, which is called P Comp. And I will use the bus compressor. And the settings for this is I want a high ratio, I want a fast attack, the fastest attack possible in a medium-ish release. And I'm gonna crank the makeup gain all the way and then just pull down the threshold all the way. So we're just gonna you know, slam the compressor, we're gonna compress the hell out of it, and then we're gonna mix that heavily compressed sound back in with the original. Now, this is going to be adding some, some sustain, which we did take off with the transient designer. So you're wonder, you might be asking, well, why would you do that? Because I want to bring, reintroduce that sustain, but in a more, you know, compressed, gritty, um, parallel compression type of way with just more attitude. And what I'll, let's, let's, let's do this here. Let's, uh, let's listen to this compressed signal here. Can turn that reverb off. So that's what the compressed sound or the compressed track sounds like. What I actually might do as well is before this compressor, add a little bump in the high end. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll maybe use like a plugin like this. Um, this Helos 69 plugin. And here at 10K, I'm just going to add a little bump of 2 dB here. And this compressed, or excuse me, this EQ just sounds really nice. Um, so again, it's going to add kind of a little, a little analog touch to it. Um, so here's without that EQ and with. This, it's adding just a little little sparkle okay and then we're just going to blend this back in with the original so here we go it's too much
maybe something about right there would work. So let's let's hear it with with and without the parallel compression. So with and without. With and without. So this is really just, just really just bringing up everything, um, making everything sound a little bit fuller, it's kind of pushing everything forward in the speakers and, and really just, uh, yeah, helping tie everything together. Okay, so let's do a little A-B comparison before any processing at all. So we're gonna turn off the parallel compression and the processing here, and we'll do a little, little A-B back and forth. So with no processing, So there you go, we have a, a much fuller drum sound. Um, it, it sounds a little bit louder as well because we've you know controlled the dynamics. We've added some, some distortion there and that parallel compression, all those little layers help for, you know, help to achieve a, a louder drum sound without really increasing the peak level at all. So that is it. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. Love to hear from you. Take care everyone. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.